Good morning. This is Sarah Honeydew for JNS Biblical Productions, December 31st, 1881. I'm here today to recognize for this year a good Samaritan that has no equal or comparison in her field. She was the first to control a large share of humanitarian endeavors. She was nicknamed the Angel of the Battlefield and later founded the American Red Cross. Welcome to JNS Biblical Productions, the free spirit of the American Red Cross, Clara Barton. Hi, can I get you a glass of water, some bandages maybe? I'm the receptionist here. Uh, Miss, <laughs> Miss Flum, um, please, I know that you're trying to make our guests feel welcome, but bandages, water, couldn't you think of anything more suitable? You know, I remember back in the days of the Civil War in 1862 when there were so many dead and dying that Sometimes it was all I could do to offer a wounded soldier a drink of water for a parched throat, or tear off a piece of my underskirt to use as a bandage at Fredericksburg. Yes, I would like a glass of water. Thank you. Thank you. Please, tell us, what drives you? What motivates you? It's not something as simple as money, no. I just saw a need. After the Battle of Fort Wagner on July 14th of 1863, I was stationed on Morris Island, and I wrote to a friend in Italy saying, today the sun rises and sets on a million acres of square miles of land. We realized we were fighting the battles of the world with the armies of freedom. And I wrote in May of 63, after Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, that the white may blossoms fall on the glad faces and toil-worn hands of four million liberated slaves. America had freed a race. I see you were with the program of freeing slaves. Um, let's get to your start in the Civil War. It was at Cedar Mountain in August of 1862. No woman had ever been to the front lines, but General McClellan had just taken major losses on June 1st at Fair Oaks, Virginia. The quartermaster had just given me the okay to go to Cedar Mountain, so I loaded up all of my medical supplies in a railroad car and took off. After that, I never could be kept from the firing lines. All the appointments in the world couldn't hold me back from personally going to the front. <laughs> Impressive. So you were officially recognized and you had an office? Yes. In the winter of 1864, I was assigned to the Army of the James under General Butler. I was in the Department of Nurses, the office of the superintendent. But all of that pales when set against the work done in the field. Antietam, Petersburg, the Wilderness, Fredericksburg, Spotsylvania, and, of course, where I got my start at Fort Moultrie in Charleston. Wow. Let's get to the end of the war. You had something to do with re reburying the dead, is that right? Yes. <clears throat> a former prisoner of Andersonville had kept a secret record of the deceased. He had the names of 13,000 who had been buried there. He wrote to me and told me of his secret list. So in the summer of 1865, with a crew of 40, I supervised the reentering of 12,800 Union soldiers and 400 Confederates, all with Christian burials. Later, 700 more were found. Wow, that really is impressive. Um, so did you get paid by the government for that? I did. In March, on March 10th of 1866, the Senate and the House voted that $15,000 should be my re reimbursement for discovering them and relaying the intelligence to their families. The fascinating thing was that people were writing from all over the country wanting to know the facts of the war. I arranged to deliver 300 lectures in different parts of the country, but my voice gave out in, by the end of 1868, and a doctor um, suggested that I go to Europe. Okay, um, well, it looks like we uh, run out of time for war stories, but I want to get to your founding of the American Red Cross. How did that start? It actually began with the Austria-Prussian War in 1866. They had an international Red Cross in Europe, which I helped with. Their president, Mr. G. Moynier, wrote to our president urging him to establish an American Red Cross, with me actually handing him the request. 
It sat for a while, but when President Garfield was elected in 1880, his Secretary of State had it pushed through Congress. I had only a, one objection at that time. We had no wars, nor were we likely to have any. But after a time, I thought, there were other areas of national relief, calamities, fires, floods, plagues, and famines. All right. Well, now we know the origin of the Red Cross in May 21st, 1881. Um, but I do have a final question. Do you belong to an organized church or a religious denomination? I don't think that I would be what you would call a church woman, but I believe firmly in the divinity of Jesus Christ and in his life of suffering to save the world from sin as much was in his power to do. I've read the parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, and he, speaking of himself, lived the human life. You know what? I'm going to join the Red Cross. I'm so excited for your next disaster. I have alcohol to clean the wounds, a saw in case of amputation, scissors, I also have bandages, tape for the, the bandages, cotton to cleanse the wounds. You know what, join them, Claire Barton. <laughs> I'm so excited! <laughs> I can't add anything more than give an opinion that has already been stated in the journals. You are the most perfect incarnation of mercy the modern world has known. The earth has never had, could never have enough women like you. Um, you embody the vital principle of the religion's love for humanity and being a good Samaritan. This is Sarah Honeydew for JNS Biblical Productions saying good morning.